Uh, my name is Brian Harvey. I'm an independent web application developer here in Omaha. And I'm going to talk to you about telephony and how anybody can use it to, well, enhance their lives and enhance their experience with their customers potentially. So I just want to know how many background of folks here. How many folks are developers? Okay. How many folks are business owners that use their phone for business? Okay. This is for you guys, and it's also for individuals who want to do all kinds of fun stuff with phone systems. Uh, we'll kind of go through that. So what I want, uh, I guess by the end of this, I want you to be able to take away something that you can do today if you wanted to. I want to make sure that you understand that this stuff is accessible. You don't have to be a programmer to do fun stuff with telephony. So I'll show you some examples. I'll do some live examples. Hopefully they work. <laughs> uh, and we'll, we'll show you that what you can use it for as an individual all the way up to an enterprise business. Everything I'm going to show you here today is all open source and free to use. So none of it costs money. You have to pay for minutes that you're using with the, with the provider, but all this stuff is free. So let's talk about uh, what is telephony. Quite simply, it's just the electronic transmission of voice and data. It's been around for a long time. Traditionally, uh, back in the day, pre-1999, it was all done uh, by uh, provided by big telephone companies or closed providers. So everything was closed source, proprietary, and very expensive. If you had a company and needed a phone system, you'd have to go to the phone company, spend a lot of money, usually yearly, uh, to have your phone system. And then, oh, if you want to have call forwarding, call waiting, you're going to have to pay extra for all those little things. Even folks who are my age know that when you had your phone back with AT&T, if you wanted caller ID, it was extra five bucks a month. It was an extra 10 bucks a month for voicemail. Well, that kind of all changed. So in 1999, a fellow named Mark Spencer, uh, who had started up a company uh, that did Linux support. His name of his company was Linux support. It's now Digium. He wanted to have a PBX for his small company and went to the phone company and said, hook me up. And they said, OK, X amount of dollars. And he was flabbergasted by that. So he decided to take it upon himself to build an open source version of a PBX, or a private branch exchange. And he called it Asterix. And Asterix is for everyone. It's an open source implementation of a private branch exchange. And a private branch exchange is a fancy term for a phone system. So it allows companies or individuals to communicate with each other within their company and then communicate out to the public telephone network. Um, Asterix can connect to the traditional publicly switched telephone network, so you can use copper pairs to it. Or all the examples you're going to see today are using voice over IP. Uh, it didn't originally do voice over IP, but as uh, internet bandwidth speeds become better, uh, they can start sending a lot more of the telephone packets over the same kind of network that you do with TCP packets. Uh, and the quality became better, so it's more reliable today. So a lot of companies are switching from traditional to voice over IP systems to save money. Uh, it was originally written for Linux and managed by a command line interface. So if you knew Asterix back in 2000, 2003, you were a hardcore geek, right? So you had to do it via the command line. You had to do it by configuration files. Uh, it was really hard and inaccessible to the average Joe. Uh, many people saw this as an opportunity to use this open source Asterix and built GUIs on top of it. So most of the tools you're going to see today are GUIs that are built on top of Asterix functionality that make it accessible to anybody who's not a programmer or anybody who wants to learn or do telephony. So how can you use it? Well, I, I challenge you to find ways you can't use it. Um, if you can think of a scenario you want to do with routing calls, sending text messages, sending calls, you can pretty much do it given that you you know, know the technology enough to be able to have it happen. Uh, so I'll give you just a quick use case that anybody might run into. Let's say you're on Craigslist and you're selling your car. And you really hate to give out your private phone number to get, your, you know, you don't want to give out your cell phone because you're going to get calls from weirdos at 3 o'clock in the morning. And you don't want to give out your text, you know, so they can text you at weird times. So what you can do is you can go to a VOIP carrier and for $1 buy a phone number instantly provision that phone number. So once you hit buy, you can use it instantly. You can then set it up very easy to forward to your cell phone. And it'll also, by the way, forward your SMS messages to your cell phone. And now you're insulated. So all those calls are going to that number. They're coming to your cell phone. That person at the end never knows who you are. 
right? So that's just one way you can use it. And there are countless other use cases you can think of. And we'll go through a few of them, I guess. Uh, one way you can use it, <laughs> for good or for evil, uh, is you can do things like spoof your caller ID for fun, uh, for security reasons. So if you have a need for privacy, you can do that. Or you can do it for more creative reasons. So if there's some social engineers out there, uh, open source telephony can kind of help you out. Uh, you can, another use case example, you can get a, a, a number in a different city. Let's say you're an independent developer like I am. And I know that there's a lot of what I do going on in Chicago. Well, I can go and for a dollar buy a local Chicago number spin up a page on my website that looks like I'm from Chicago <laughs> and have people call me and think I'm in Chicago. Uh, that's one way you can do it. Or, you know, another example is if you have family who still use traditional phone lines and pay a lot of long distance. I don't know who does these days, but you might. Uh, you can give them a local number. If they're in Atlanta, you can give them a local number that forwards to you so you're saving all that money. So there's a ton of ways to save money. Uh, and I guess I jumped myself here, but again, there are tons of use cases you can come up with. Uh, well, where's the profit? There are a lot of ways to profit from it. Uh, the most easiest example is to save money, right? So you can ditch AT&T, you can ditch your landline. You can even take your landline number. A lot of people like my mom and dad still have their landline. And I tell them every day, this is silly. Why do you have this? You can port that number to a VOIP provider for a dollar a month and have those calls go to your cell phone so their worry is, their barrier to exiting is, well, everybody knows our number. We've had it for 50 years, right? Well, you can keep that number, port it over, and now it, everything will go to your cell phone. So it's more convenient, it's easier, and you're saving some scratch. Um, as a business person or just a regular person, you can communicate in more unique, different ways with people you know potentially your customers. Uh, so it, you can have more touch points with your customers through SMS and through uh, telephony, voice. And I'll show you some examples and use cases that we go through. Uh, if you're a developer, um, you can access, uh, it's really easy now to access telephony applications. If you know how to use a REST service, you can write phone systems. You can write text messaging systems. Uh, all it takes is understanding REST. So you don't have to be an asterisk geek to get up and running with really powerful features. So that could become a new rev revenue stream for you. Uh, it's a value added to your customers. So when you're building something for them, you can say, oh, I, we're building a customer relationship management tool for you. Wouldn't it be great if we just click the phone number and it dials you and dials them, right? Convenient, easy. So you can do things like automate processes or become more efficient. I'll show you an example of how I use it. Uh, so I have a company where people have trouble every once in a while, so they need to open a service ticket. Well, I like to know when those things happen. So I'll show you what I did to implement some notification service so I know when somebody opens up a ticket. Uh, and you can build whatever you can think of. Really, the sky's wide open. And it's, it's really kind of an exciting place to be right now because it is a disruptor. And it has been since 2000, right? So we're taking all this business away from the phone companies and empowering anybody who wants to spend a little time with it to do the same things that they, could, that they had to pay thousands for, for free. So uh, let's go to demos, and hopefully all this demo stuff will work. So, so nope, we're not going to do that. Um, so I talked about wanting to be able to empower anybody to walk out of this talk and do exactly that, to, to spin up a phone number for whatever they want to spin it up for, right? So let's say that you're doing that Craigslist deal and you want to hide your identity with a new phone number. So you can go to this VOIP provider called Vitality, and I went last night and bought a number. The number cost me $1. It cost me one cent a minute to call. I think it cost me less or half a cent to do a text message through it. So this is the number I bought. I selected the select down. So when I bought it, it instantly became available in my list of numbers. I selected how I wanted to route it. I wanted to forward it to my cell phone. So now if I call that, 
and I'll do it and hopefully it'll work. Oh, another cool thing too, if you have a VOIP system, you can have a phone on any electronic device you have. So this is my soft phone on my computer. So anywhere I'm connected to the internet, somebody can reach me. If I'm in Denver on vacation, somebody calls my local number and I have my soft phone up on my phone or on my computer, I can use it. When I'm out of the country and I'm on Wi-Fi, I don't even use the cellular network. I call through my voice over IP system and save myself a ton of money by not using my carrier. But let's go ahead and call, what number was that? So hopefully, all things being equal. So now it's routing to my cell phone and I can take that call and if I leave a voicemail, it'll send me a note that says, hey, you got a voicemail and record it for you and also transpose it for you if you want to. All for free. <laughs> so that's one thing that everybody could walk out of here today and do. It takes zero knowledge of telephony. Go ahead, you got a question? So, is there any difference then between this and Google Voice, how you could just get a number for free? Not a lot, no. Okay. Google Voice is just another provider. Uh, they've kind of, Google Talk has kind of gone away. They're now doing that unified messaging thing, which is a little different. So, uh, if you go down that route, and I'll show you another provider, where if you kind of go down that route, you're kind of in their ecosystem. Uh, and you can choose to go that way, which is totally cool, and they have some cool stuff you can do with it. But if you choose like an independent, then you can, the sky's the limit, right? So Vitality has the same kind of APIs that another provider, I'll show you, Twilio. So you can, I write a lot of stuff on the backbone of this as well, send messages out through applications and things like that. It turns out to be pretty cheap and easy. So that's use case one, and again, anybody can do that. You can do that right now and have it forward out. So let's show you another. So what I'm going to try to do here is talk about or illustrate different levels that you can get into. So this is great for individuals or small businesses that want to use it. I'll give you some use cases there. I'll give you some use cases if you're an application developer so you can see how you can integrate telephony in. And then I'll show you an example of some enterprise level stuff that you can do uh, with open source te te telephony. So we'll go kind of progression. So uh, another company that you need to know about if you're a developer or a uh, person interested in voice over IP or other SMS telephony is Twilio. Twilio has asterisks on the back end and it has RESTful services on the front end. So as an application developer, you can easily spin up uh, telephony services within your application. They have a great interface, uh, they have great reporting, Excellent tools, they're my go-to place if I want to integrate telephony into an application or a web app. Uh, but just because they have a REST API and they're for programmers, they also have a really cool application called OpenVBX. OpenVBX, and this, again, you're kind of tied in the Twilio ecosystem, which is my book okay, because they're pretty open. OpenVBX is an open source application that you can run on dirt old hardware and it'll run great. Uh, or you can, for four bucks a month, I think Bluehost will spin up an instance for you. So if you're not a geeky guy and don't know how to install this kind of stuff, they'll install it for you. I say if you can do WordPress, you can do Open to VBX. Uh, really, you just have to know how to use an FTP and the GUI interface and you're good to go. So let's show you some examples with Open VBX. So, Let's go back to that example I just showed you that we did with Vitality, where we bought a number, we spun it up, and we forwarded it to our cell phone. Kind of watch how easy it is to do in here. So this is my OpenVBX account, which connects to my Twilio account. And I've already provisioned a number here for it. But you can buy a brand new number, buy it in whatever area code you want. Once you buy it, it's instantly available to you. So let's create a new flow. So flows just tell OpenVBX what, what you want to do when a call comes in. So let's do exactly what we talked about. We want to forward it to our cell phone. So I'm going to create a new flow. Call it cell. It takes me in. So it says, when a call begins, what should I do? You simply drag 
drop. Uh, I'm already in the user, but I can put a custom phone number in there. Uh, you can select the caller ID that you want. Uh, it'll announce a call for you. So if somebody calls in, it'll say, caller ID, Fred Smith is calling you. Do you want to take the call? And then you can press one or no so you can decline it. And if nobody answers, it'll take a voicemail or do whatever else you want it to do. You can build a tree out. So this is all total drag and drop, totally easy, absolutely accessible to anybody who wants to use it. So whatever you can think of, again, you can pretty much do. So I also have a nice fun demo. And I spun this instance up last night. In fact, uh, I brought my son and daughter here tonight. A year ago when I started playing with this, my, my son built an IVR, which is an integrated voice system. So press one for a monkey, I think we did, and press two for an elephant. And he did it all on his own, you know, within 15 minutes of drag and drop. So it's totally easy to do. So I got a demo here. So I encourage you to, because I'll need the participation in order for the demo to work. But you can text that number or call that number to vote for which track is your favorite track, right? And if you uh, vote via text, it'll come back with a relevant response based on what your track you chose. So if you choose technology, it'll quip about technology. If you dial in to vote that way, uh, I encourage you to select the wrong number. Select a six, just for fun. So you can build what if cases. So if he's going to select the wrong number, not one through four, it'll say, well, how'd you screw that up? You got to do one through four, right? So it's kind of fun. And this is something you can do in seconds. So and again, this is all free. So imagine if you're in a business scenario, or if you have clients who have a business, uh, a lot of folks use OpenBVX and can use it because it's open source to sell as a service to their customers. So if you're in SEO marketing, you can help your customers with SMS campaigns or other things that you would want to do with telephony. So it's kind of fun. So let's look at the results of our poll. Did, everybody, did it work for everybody? You get a response? So let's go ahead and manage the poll here. Oh, oh by the way, for the guys in the bunch who think, well, what if I do twice or three times or four times? Logs it one time, so it knows. It won't let you vote over again. It'll give you a response every time, but on the back end, it only lets you vote. So we can say that, you know, obviously technology is pretty popular, so that's pretty cool. Now, one other thing that's kind of cool is, lo and behold, I didn't do it. I tricked you, kind of, let's just say. <laughs> Normally, it would be an opt-in, but I now have a list of everybody who just helped me out. Pretty awesome. So let's do that. And so imagine if you're a small business owner. Hopefully, it should be working. Everybody's phone ringing? It should in a minute if it doesn't. And again, I got this running on some low software. But if you answer that phone, it'll give you a nice thanks for coming to bar camp. So, and again, totally free. So whatever you can think of, you can do it. And this is a great free tool to do that in. Uh, there are a ton of other use cases, and there are a ton of plugins you can go find. And, and the only thing you need to do to install them is put them on the FTP, and they're there. So it's really accessible, really cool, really easy. So uh, you can do a lot with free open source stuff. So let's talk about other things we can do with it from a developer point of view, and maybe the next, step, the next level up. Uh, and I. I'm not going to show you any real demos with this. I'll just speak to it. Uh, this is a very powerful tool if you're a small business owner. This is what I run my own phone system with. It's called FreePBX, and it allows you a full suite of really unlimited features. You can do IVRs. I use it to do time of day, so today I'm not in the office. So it knows that and answers my business phone. Hey, you've reached us out of hours. If you need support, go to support.com, open a ticket. Here are our regular business hours. If it's 8 to 5 Monday through Friday, it'll ring my extension, right? You can do uh, uh, 
round robin ring. So if one person in your company doesn't pick it up, it'll forward to the next one, it'll forward to the next one. I mean, I could talk about it for hours, days even, of all the functionality you can do. But it is a little more geeky. Uh, you have to have a little bit of understanding of trunks and technology, but a lot of those folks like Vitality will help you out with that because they want you to use their numbers. So that's kind of mid-level open source asterisk stuff. And then we can get into like in more enterprise level use cases. Uh, so this is a, so I have a company, I often get support requests. So this is a notification system that I built on top of my uh, ticketing system. So I'll go ahead and open a ticket so you can see what that's like. And then I want to know what's going on. So if I'm away, and email's great, text messages are great, but I find that sometimes I don't hear it or feel it, or I leave my phone upstairs and I don't know what's happening. So for urgent tickets, and of course every customer is urgent, right? Uh, let's put test, test. Oops. So I'm gonna create that service ticket, and it should, so I have a custom ringtone, and it gets my butt out of bed, it lets me know I have an urgent ticket. And it'll also send me an email and a text message. And then if I open, uh, if I listen to that call, it describes what the ticket's about. So it'll tell me, Fred Smith opened a ticket with the subject of, and it'll tell me what the subject is. So if it's some bogus thing, I'm gonna go back to bed. So I don't have to, it gives me more information uh, in a hands-free environment. So uh, that was done using uh, Twilio and REST API. Here's an application that I'm building. Uh, uh, it's not launched yet, but the front end's all done. So I do some stuff in the real estate market, so I'm opening a company called CallForSaleByOwner.com, which uses, leverages telephony to help people who are selling their home by owner manage all the leads that are coming in. So we do things like give you a custom phone number. So if you sign up for the service, you get a custom phone number in your area code. You get an email along with that. And then we print you a yard sign that you stick in your front yard. It says call for sale by owner. You have your custom number. It calls that number and that number is the gateway for you. So uh, people interact with the IVR and they can press one to get a, a, a link with a mobile friendly website of the house or they can contact you. Uh, people can leave a voice message if you want them to. Uh, it also collects statistical data on the person. So if I send you a link, uh, I set a cookie so I know how many times you're visiting my site again and again. Uh, and with caller ID, a lot of times, well, hit and miss, 50% of the time or better, I also get a name, number, and address on you. So I, I now have building a contact list and as a homeowner, I can say this is a hot lead, this is not a hot lead kind of thing. I'm still building the back end, but it's fully functional this side. So if you called or text or QR coded, you'd see it all and it works. So that's kind of a more of an enterprise level. Uh, that's also using Twilio uh, through S services. And then the, I guess the biggest application that I've been involved with is uh, I do a lot of work with call centers and writing applications and workflows for them. And I've done a lot of work in the real estate market. One of the call centers I work for uh, uh, has the call center for Century 21. And we noticed that 50% of the time, agents aren't answering their phone. So I created this company called Realty Receptionist, and I'm kind of exiting that company, but uh, that allows real estate agents to spin up a number instantly and then they can forward their phone to that number and we'll have a live agent answer that call and they have access to all that agent's listings and so they can answer questions about that listing. So it's pretty simple and it allows those real estate agents to track that. This was done using an open source uh, call suite called Vici Dial that's built specifically for call centers. Uh, and it's a very powerful solution as well. And you don't need to be that big of a geek to, to use it. Um, but for example, if for whatever reason you're a small business and you need to spin up a call center fast, within a day you can provision hardware and have 50 seats of an inbound call center going or an outbound call center going just like that. Um, back in the day, 
you'd pay hundreds of thousands to do that. You can do that with an older piece of hardware. We run on PowerEdge 1950s for guys who have no servers. Uh, dual quad core, not spectacular hardware. Uh, it's cheap. Uh, and it's easy. So anybody, any questions about telephony, how you can use it? Would you use it? That, that first demo that you did, so you just bought the number of Vitality and then support it to your own OpenBBX server? server? Uh, uh, well, that first demo? I forwarded it. I forwarded it just to my cell phone. So you don't even you need it. You did it with your own BBX, <laughs> uh, Open BBX I did, yes. Okay. The one with Vitality is just all in Vitality. You don't have to install anything. You don't have to do anything. You just go to Vitality. Buy the phone number, forward it, done. And Open BBX based on Asterix? Open BBX is based on Asterix, yes. It, uh, well, it's based on Twilio, which is based on Asterix, because there's that intermediary level. So if you, if you use Open BBX, then you're in the Twilio sphere. So you buy your numbers from. Now, there are people, because it's open source, who have uh, developed plugins for other trunking. So you don't have to use Twilio if you don't like them, but there's no reason not to. Um, so any other questions? For OpenBBX, no. Uh, but it is super easy to do if you wanted to. Um, like I said, if, I mean, if you know how to install Ubuntu, you can install OpenBBX. And if you know how to Word, WordPress, uh, there are a couple hosts. If you go to the OpenBBX website, there are a couple of hosts where you can just turn it on and off. Bluehost is one. I think it's like $4.95 a month. And you can just spin it up and bring it back down. But I have virtualized all of these. So that is a virtualized instance right now. So you could replicate that and do it if you had to scale it or you wanted to distribute it to customers. Uh, and OpenBBX is also multi-tenant. So if you wanted to provide these services to customers, you could have manage multiple customers in that same interface and, and see and bill, keep all their billing separate. So it's pretty cool from that perspective as well. So, OK. Any other questions? All right, have fun.